So uh, basically, uh, it's partitioned in two parts. Very quickly, I will run through the academic part and then look at how the research applications of it is there. So uh, basically, we use it in our academics uh, in the area of systems modeling. Uh, most often, we use we tended to use uh, analytical methods by which, uh, which is the best way to start teaching uh, mechanics and uh, system dynamics modeling and ask students to write codes themselves and uh, learn from it. Uh, there is a tendency now for students to use, uh, uh, if you want to do quick soft, uh, problem solving of advanced things, uh, advanced uh, applications in uh, directly in the application scenario, then we use uh, tools like MATLAB. And Scilab has been used sparingly, I would say. We also use our, one of the uh, symbolic uh, simulation, modeling and simulation language uh, based software, which is based on bond graphs. Uh, I don't know how many of you would have heard of it, but it is. Uh, a tool uh, developed to model physical systems, and uh, that's more uh, a symbolic modeling uh, tool. Uh, you can put in the uh, Google reference to it and get sites. But I will not talk about it in, uh, uh, in this uh, workshop here, because that's more a symbolic thing, and it does not come in the purview of our uh, numerical simulation methods. So if you're talking of uh, teaching people to, uh, we are trying to bring in, in mechanical engineering education, trying to make people be able to understand dynamics of physical systems and see how they can simulate various kind of systems. So you may be looking at some very simple systems like this, wherein if you have a constrained uh, mechanical systems where there's motion and uh, linkages, and you have a variety of elements, the best way is to use analytical methods to derive the equations, the lagrange euler methods, or the, uh, uh, and come up with uh, the system equations, and then solve it by any means. Uh, first principles, we focus on trying to get the equations right, and then we try to see the solutions for, for this. MATLAB, Scilab, and all these are the tools right now for that. We also look at uh, courses like dynamics of processes, controls, applications, wherein it has a component on the systems modeling, which is primarily uses the state space approach, and that's very easily handleable by the softwares, both like uh, MATLAB and Scilab. We have seen that uh, this morning, a few examples, and I'm sure in the afternoon we'll have more of it. So I don't want to go through this in details. But uh, as we go towards the controls part, we look at more aspects like controllability, observability analysis, control systems design, designing of the controllers, tuning of the controllers, et cetera. And I specifically more target these towards applications in, in manufacturing and robotics in our, in our courses. So basically, they work with uh, systems directly in the physical domain when we are teaching like this, like work with mechanical systems or electrical systems right from there. This one, and we try to implement them in, uh, in psych, uh, uh, for their simulation purposes. I'm glad to hear today morning that uh, we can actually have an interface to PSYCOS with the Modelica and actually do this online. Otherwise, our alternative is we use uh, bond graphs for it as well. Okay. So when we design control systems, uh, we actually expect students to learn through various aspects of uh, modeling, controller in the loop, and look at its response at, uh, with various uh, parameters. So I'll quickly now jump into the uh, research applications. I'll take up uh, three applications which uh, I found it very useful. Uh, students do use it for or these kind of tools. And uh, I, uh, I think uh, Scilab will be very useful here too. So quickly I'll go through this. The first one on sensor network applications wherein the objects of our work, uh, research work is to track objects moving in a field of sensor networks. And uh, it has elements of uh, distributed sensing and signal processing, which also involves uh, distribution computation and estimation of uh, states, essentially modeling signal processing and estimation. And we need to go through multiple simulations 
much of it is currently done by students in, in a tool like MATLAB itself. Uh, I'll expect to see if we can put in proper use of Scilab for this. I'll be very happy to encourage that. So the problem is like tracking an object moving through a sensor like a network like this. So each sensor uh, collects some data about the tracked object and transmits to a base station and there is an estimation or a tracking filter in a base station which, which computes all this. So basically we model the system through its state space approach, look at its motion and since this is a, a sensor real network, the sensing, sense data is often corrupted with considerable amount of noise so we need to filter that out and come up with good estimates. So this is a st statistical uh, process, a stochastic process, wherein we uh, bring in factors about the signal and its noise, uh, which is modeled uh, through uh, a probability distribution, assuming uh, uh, a Gaussian distribution there. We have a model of the measurement model of the system, which is typically incorporated in the form of matrices like this. And we come up with a prediction uh, of the state of the system through set of operations in sequence. This is a very simple sequence we use here is the Kalman filter. I'll not go through this in uh, details, uh, any references, but I'll just give you how we get to use this. So typically when we try to do a simulation, tip, a simulation looks like if an uh, object is moving in straight line through the sensor network, which is spread out densely, then you'd like to look at how the um, uh, uh, state, the X position, the Y position of it is, is estimated, how many sensors are involved, what will be the error it is generated in our estimate, and we look at it as it improves through the, um, as it goes through various steps of simulation. So simulations are typically like in straight line motion or a motion which is non-straight line, sinusoidal motion like this, or you go through circular motion, then how the sensors are involved and what is the nature of error we get in this. So the objective of this is basically to uh, uh, to design efficient uh, codes or algorithms to get good estimates of these positions. Repeated simulations of this are required and such kind of uh, tools are very useful for, for us. Okay. The next one is, uh, next exa example is in um, autonomous vehicles. We are actually designing a, a, an autonomous vehicle for the Indian government an underwater vehicle which will move in its own, on its own steam uh, ability, with its own ability to navigate itself. So basically, if a navigation has two parts, it has to nav localize itself, that is, uh, identify its own position and then decide what to do next. Much of this uh, design activity is focused on creating a, a priori, a good control scheme which will be implemented in the vehicle through and then uh, launched. Several simulations of this have to be done beforehand before we really concretize on it. So typically, here the purple element shows a vehicle moving through a f an area and it localizes itself with respect to certain landmarks. And this is what we call a localization and mapping algorithm here. One can do it in the same way like we do a Kalman filter, but this is an extended Kalman filter where when you use a vehicle model and a landmark model, and we use the sensor model with its noise uh, uh, observation captured in it, and uh, you recursively apply an algorithm to predict the state of it. Let's quickly go through this, uh, and we can use applications, uh, the sensors like variant sensors with a inertial navigation system and a compass, and take in its real data of actual vehicle systems, and then look at how an object will move. Like this is a typical. Uh, simulated output of uh, a vehicle trying to move in a circle uh, and it, it doesn't know much about the environment. So it takes a few landmarks, uh, the, uh, the, red, the green stars are some of the landmarks. At point to point uh, of its movement, it picks up some landmarks at a time and re-estimates its position. So the uh, actual uh, trajectory is, uh, uh, it's supposed to move in a circle which is, uh, there, but the actual trajectory deviates from that a little bit because of the noise uh, it picks up and a few landmarks it uses. So the trying to define good algorithms for that is required. So we try to look at micro level at the structure, what happens here, 
and see the effect of various sensors, et cetera. So this is where all these curves and data is generated out of a, a numerical computation toolbox. Uh, and the codes for this are written uh, by in these toolboxes itself. Uh, I'm glad to hear today that uh, Kalman filter applications are coming up in the next version of Scilab. So we'd like to see how we can use it. I'll end this with a quick, uh, uh, this one, a little more detail about how we use control systems in, a, in a, another mechanical application that's a gripper, which we are designing uh, using compliant mechanisms. And uh, these mechanisms are uh, actuated by uh, microgrippers, which are actuated by piezoelectric devices. So this is a type of a, a diagram of it, not exactly in scale. This is an earlier model. Uh, typically, a gripper which is moved by uh, piezo actuators, it can open and close. It doesn't need any joints inside it, no motors and all that. Okay. So these are modeled using uh, mathematical uh, representations. So we simplify this into a, a equivalent mass spring damper model and then get its equations. And this is what uh, we can actually simulate and create a model like this in a Simulink. Uh, this is our student has done it in Simulink. Uh, the same block scheme can be used very easily in Psychos. You can see that. Okay. The also use tools like Sim Mechanics. Uh, it would be nice to see how we can see Sim Mechanics equivalence in in, in uh, Scilab or Psychos. Okay. And uh, SIM mechanics uh, allows us to uh, directly represent the mechanical system modules into uh, in the uh, Simulink version of it. So here we look at, again, performance with various things, like when there is a position control implemented, when there is a force control implemented, et cetera, these kind of things with uh, all kind of PID controllers built in. I'll conclude with this. Uh, brief is, uh, Computational mathematical tools are very useful for us, and uh, there's no doubt about it. If these are available in in uh, uh, in free domain, I'm sure many users will come in uh, to use it. Uh, MATLAB is perhaps uh, more prevalently used right now amongst the IIT students. So it is proprietary, so we have dependence on it. We'd like to move out of it soon. Uh, use of open source tools like in Scilab should be able to extend the innovation in education in education as well as the design processes here. So if you really want to have a Scilab being used, we have to actually think of ways of getting industry also being involved uh, in this process. Uh, maybe you need to have a version of it which is uh, like priced and sold and sold as a product supported as a product also. Like uh, MATLAB, I'm not sure about its uh, economic viability, etc. but then uh, this is a reality. I would say that uh, in, uh, in projects where there's an end use of the uh, research which is going out, uh, they want deliverables in a code which will be run by anybody in the com company, not necessarily people who are graduates from these IITs or other institutions.